Hi, Jennifer, I'm just getting back to you. I love getting questions. Thank you for sending this. It was a comment slash question. And I wanted to get back to Jennifer because Jennifer's been following me for a long time. We've been on this journey together. And uh, Jennifer, I'm gonna give you my community number at the end of this where you can text me because I'm losing these DMs. There's too many places to inbox me. And uh, if I don't snap a, a shot of your question, I'll lose it. It goes away. And, uh, and then someday I'm back on a page and there it is again. So uh, forgive me for that. But Jennifer's question was this, how do I move on? How do I move on when the alcoholic has moved on because I set boundaries up in my life? Okay, so that's, that's kind of the way it reads and um, I wish I could get more information on it, but I think I understand the point. So you've got an alcoholic in your life and you've decided I'm, I'm done. I've been listening to Karen. I've been going to Al-Anon. I cannot live like this anymore, right? I'm going to put down some boundaries. I'm going to move on with my life. Now, not everyone decides to do that. Some people decide that they are going to stay with their loved one, but set up boundaries within that relationship. So whatever you want to do. But the question is pretty much, how do you move on? when you've set up boundaries and they move on. See, I think this is, this is the problem. It's easy to set up a boundary if you think someone's gonna do what you want, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say no, because now they're gonna do what I want. What if you say no and they don't do what you want? It's like, uh-oh, right? So the goal of saying no or setting a boundary is not to get what you want, okay? It's not to coerce somebody or force somebody into a direction. You're doing what you need for you. That's why it's really important to go to Al-Anon, right? Because otherwise you're gonna continue to think that the reason you're going to Al-Anon is to get this person to do what you want. That's not why you're going to Al-Anon or Naranon. That's not why you're listening to me. You're listening to me, you're listening to others about codependency because you're sick and tired of living the way you are. You cannot take it. It's the craziness of alcoholism is driving you crazy, right? You do not have to be an alcoholic addict to suffer from someone's alcoholism, right? So you're trying to get better no matter what they do that's difficult. So what happens when you set a boundary? I have another question this morning. I'm going to do separately, but it's very much similar. So watch the next few vlogs if this is your scenario, if you're a codependent. What do you do when you set a boundary and they get worse, right? Or, or let's say I have a husband and I've set a boundary and I'm done and I'm going to tell you, you got to go. Like, I am not putting my kids around this anymore. You got to leave uh, until you get some help because we're not going to do this anymore. And you're, you're, you know, you're off the bank accounts. You're gone. And he goes and he gets a little apartment because his parents pay for it or something, right? Somebody gives him, a, a buddy gives him a, some money and he gets an apartment and then he meets a girl and she's younger than you. <laughs> And they're going to the clubs and they're partying and it's like wait a minute wait a minute this is not what was supposed to happen you are having a great time what is going on here now this happens sometimes and it's like oh my god what did i do okay let me tell you something that is short-lived if the person you are in love with living with married to is an alcoholic addict that little hurrah is gonna go boop, okay wait it out you're not crazy you never would have thought of setting a boundary going to Al-Anon getting help protecting you and your kids if there wasn't a problem so do not doubt yourself and watch the show Okay, eventually he's gonna run out of money. He's gonna lose the job. The girl's gonna leave. She's probably gonna crash his car before she goes. 
right? It's going to be a shit show. Kicked out of the clubs. Bugging you for cash. Right? The whole deal. You've got to wait a minute. Just wait a minute. Okay? It might look like roses. They're suffering. Especially if they've just lost their wife and kids. So don't buy into that. Oh, I should have kept him. I should have stayed in with him. And I should have helped him. Don't do that. Okay? If you've made up your mind. If you've gotten help at Al-Anon and Naranon And you've made a conscious decision to move forward with your life, then you move forward, regardless of what they're doing. It might look like they're moving forward. Let's see. Let's see. You're not crazy, right? You're the one working, paying the bills, taking care of the children, right? You're the one doing this. Focus on your recovery. It's the best chance for help they have, is if you do not buy into that bullshit. I'm telling you. It's just, uh, alcoholism is a crazy illness. Crazy train. Do not get on the train with them. Okay? And your heart might be broken because they met someone new who, under the girl who understands. You know what? She's going to understand for about 10 minutes. And then she's going to get sick of that shit too. So, don't buy it. You're fine. Stay the course. The only chance this person has is that you're going to have a, a program your own program of recovery regardless of what they're doing even if they get sober and come back to you you're going to keep that program of recovery you have to alcoholism is out to kill him and you and your kids and that girl that he just took hostage so you know i i get it this is hard stuff, but I have walked women through this. I think of my friend Corey. Corey, if you're watching this, comment, please. Uh, who did this and was in the crux of it. Had him in the house and he was going through the cash. And she was going more and more into debt. And everything was going to crazy town. And she just took the leap and said, you got to go. You got to go. And she got an attorney. And she stopped the spending. And she got the debt and she got but and she protected her business and she's moved on and she is doing great and i don't know what he's doing maybe he's getting sober someday he might get sober and come back and thank her thank you for leaving me thank you for getting out of that because i never would have gotten help i never would have crashed if you didn't do that so it's complicated you can't buy into your feelings okay that's why you need a group that's why you need a counselor a therapist or better yet, an Al-Anon or Naranon group, because those people are talking about their own experience and then you get to decide. It's different than a therapist sitting there telling you, you know what, you need to leave your husband. You know what, don't tell me what to do. I'm not leaving my husband. But if you listen to enough other people's experiences, you will make your own decision if you wanna leave or stay or what you need to do. You get to make the decisions in a 12-step group. That's the beauty of it. No one's telling you what to do. So, not even me. So, what I'm telling you is, if you're moving forward, regardless, keep going forward. Okay? Don't uh, watch all that craziness going on in the alcoholics' lives. Keep moving forward. Do what you're doing. It will all make sense soon. Okay? Let me know if you have any questions. Now, I'm going to give you my community number. Write this down. 760-388-6621. That's a better place to send me your questions because then they're all in one spot and I don't lose them. I love you all. Have a great day.